Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Unique Bio Classes, based on NCRT syllabus for PUC first and second year. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe, like and share and hit the bell icon so that you can get notification as and then the videos are getting uploaded. Okay, we shall start today's class. <coughs> Before starting today's class, I wanted to discuss something related to previous video. In the previous video of uh, uh, for pre-fertilization event, in a pre-fertilization event, we have discussed about the chromosome number in myocyte and chromosome number in gametes. Okay, because of some comments, I came to know that there is a mistake in this. So here, the last one, the onion, the onion which has been given, its chromosome number in gamete it has been mentioned as 16. This textbook which I have, this is the old edition, 2014-15. So there are some mistakes in this textbook which I didn't notice. Uh, when the students have commented then I realized yes this is wrong information. Onion its chromosome number in myocyte is 16 and uh, chromosome number in gamete it is 8. Okay. So in new edition of textbooks you will find that gamete number is 8 and uh, myocyte number they have given dash. Okay, new additional textbooks. So you can find you make a correction there. I, earlier I have given 16 and 32. Now here it is. In myocyte number is 16 and gamete number is 8. Please do a correction in this. Okay, now we shall proceed with the next chapter. As we have completed the first chapter, we shall proceed with the second chapter. As we have completed the first chapter, I would like to suggest you all that you go through the previous queer question papers. Go through the questions what type of questions have been asked since 2014 2014 to 2020 march what questions have been asked please cover all those and uh, try to answer all those questions and make a separate note of it answer all the questions separately and write as a question bank or a question paper solved something like that and uh, solve it properly okay so this will help you all to make a note and you are having a lot of time for time being so you can use it okay now we shall proceed with the next chapter chapter 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay now in this chapter very important chapter it is it's carrying eight marks i think and uh, this chapter is related to flowering plants that is angiosperms in this plant uh, chapter you can find first they have given some uh, introduction part okay then they have given about a flower a fascinating organ of angiosperms okay this information these are just a general information which you can have not related to your exam point of view okay like they have given in here flowers are the objects of aesthetic ornamental social religious and a cultural value okay the question might be what does the flower symbolize as i have mentioned here what does the flower symbolize <coughs> okay so in this what does the flower symbolize for that you can have this as an answer it is having aesthetic ornamental social religious and cultural value and it is used for, for important human feelings such as love affection happiness grief mourning etc we are using flower in different occasions so you can mention all those as much you know you can mention there okay directly coming to the flower the first part of this chapter very important bit of this chapter that is this diagram okay in this diagram what you will find in this it is a diagrammatic representation of ls of a flower that is longitudinal section of a flower the longitudinal section of a flower it shows this diagram you might be drawing from your school right since uh, from your sixth or seventh standard you might be drawing this diagram similar to this diagram, not exactly the same then don't say it, we have not drawn this kind of a diagram okay so in this what you will find there is presence of thalamus this is the enlarged portion where you can find a thalamus on thalamus there is presence of sepal and petals these are the colored one which are we call it as petals the technical terms calyx and corolla okay calyx are green in color their function is protection and when the flower is in the form of bud petals why they are colored because they are going to attract insects to help for pollination okay they have shown only two petals here now in this flower almost all flowers uh, they consist of male reproductive organ and a female reproductive organ right here male reproductive organ is androsium you know this 
male reproductive organ is androsium androsium consists of two parts which one is it male reproductive organ is androsium androsium consists of two parts which are those one is stamen sorry one is anther another one is filament okay androsium can all be called, also be called as stamen okay androsium can also be called as stamen now androsium consists of two parts one is anther and a filament this is the anther and this longer one is the filament okay then you will find female reproductive organ female reproductive organ is what pistil or gynosium gynosium or pistil now this gynosium or pistil it consists of three parts which are those the stigma style and ovary you all know this very well is it am i right okay stigma style and ovary now inside the ovary there will be presence of an ovule which is carrying egg inside that so fertilization takes place here okay now here they have clearly mentioned there is a ovary sepal petal filament anther stigma style this diagrammatic representation you must know it has been asked for three marks only to draw they have not asked yet now we didn't got a question related to explain the structure of a flower we have got only the draw the neat label diagram of lsf flower for three marks okay very easy as to score and you must be able to draw okay this is about this one after this you have pre fertilization structure and events in this pre fertilization pre fertilization you have heard earlier right pre fertilization in the first chapter we have discussed pre fertilization is the first event in the sexual reproduction in pre fertilization we have two methods two steps again first one is gametogenesis another one is gamete transfer right we have these two one is gametogenesis another one is gamete transfer now the pre fertilization events in a flower we are going to discuss right okay now pre fertilization events in a flower what you have in a flower we have we said just now that male reproductive organ is androsium or stamen female reproductive organ is gynosium or pistil is it now in androsium how does the pre fertilization takes place what is the pre fertilization the events which takes place before fertilization right and in that gametogenesis we said gametogenesis is the process of formation of gametes how does this androsium or a stamen is producing gamete which gamete male gamete how does this gynosium or a pistil is producing a female gamete that female gamete is nothing but egg how does it produces that process we shall discuss okay and then gamete transfer how does this male gamete is reaching to the female part male gamete is produced here then how does it will reach to the female part okay that we shall discuss in this which one in pre fertilization structure and events in that we are going to discuss about it okay okay here you can find i have mentioned some of the types of flowers first one is here i have given complete and perfect flowers it might not be clear for you it is just for my reference i have written there so this power portion which has been given in your textbook that is whatever information you want you can write related to what terms they have given anyhow here you have complete and a perfect flower what do you mean by complete and a perfect flower when a flower consists of four orals which are those four orals okay which are those four orals first oral is calyx second oral is corolla third one is androsium fourth one is gynosium is it hope you remember these are the four orals of a flower if a flower consists of these four orals then we call uh, it as complete flower okay if a flower consists of all these four orals then we call it as complete flower then <coughs> complete flower or it is also called as perfect flower we are having one more incomplete flower if any one oral is absent okay if any one oral is absent okay incomplete flower is that in these four orals if any one oral is absent 
like calyx corolla and lotion is present ganesium is absent we call it as incomplete flower if any three are there calyx is absent then incomplete flower okay complete is that when all the four orals are present incomplete is that if any one oral is absent we call it as incomplete flower okay we are having one more bisexual or perfect or hermaphrodite flower already you have used hermaphrodite and bisexual in the first chapter right bi means two both the sex if a flower consists of both the essential organs when both when both essential organs are present in a flower which are those essential organs the essential organs are androsium and gynosium these are the essential organs what are this calyx and corolla these are accessory organs again from first year you should have the basic knowledge from the first year to understand this concept okay bisexual perfect or hermaphrodite is that flower which consists of both the essential organs which means both androsium and gynosium we are having imperfect flower unisexual flower or imperfect flower these flower are what it is very easy that any one of two essential organ any one of two essential organ is present in a flower we call it as unisexual is it when it consists of both the essential organs are present we call it as bisexual perfect or hermaphrodite only any one of the unisexual flower any one of the as two essential organs is present we call it as unisexual or imperfect flower we have one more term called as neuter okay neuter now what is this neuter when both the essential orals are absent when both essential organs or orals are absent for this we call it as when both the essential organs or orals are absent for this we call it as neuter flower neuter means neutral it does not have male nor female reproductive organ it is unable to reproduce that kind of a flower we call it as neuter flower okay these are the extra information complete flower or perfect flower incomplete flower bisexual or perfect or hermaphrodite unisexual or imperfect or neuter okay so then we shall proceed we were discussing about pre fertilization events right pre fertilization events pre fertilization events we said first one is gametogenesis then we said it as gamete transfer okay gametogenesis and gamete transfer as you know male reproductive organ is androsium gynosium all this basic information you should know now in a flower we are talking about pre fertilization events so first we shall discuss about stamen okay stamen or microsporangium and pollen grain okay this you have in your textbook as i you will find in your textbook it is something like this okay stamen microsporangium and a pollen grain for time being you know only stamen what is a stamen it is a male reproductive organ what is its another name androsium okay so stamen consists of two parts one is anther another one is long filament which is also called as stalk okay anther and a filament now this anther it is anther you can find it is generally bilobed structure it consists of two lobes you can find there is present but there is one lobe clearly visible on the other side it is having one more lobe then you have there is a long filament that is long and slender it is a filament the different flower they do have different sized filaments different sized thalamus it depends on different flowers number and length of the stamens varies in flower of different species okay so in this you can find we shall discuss directly what is required for the exams the other information has been given here you can collect that inform you can go through that information from here 
okay so here they have given a typical angiosperm anther is bilobed okay a typical angiosperm anther anther is this that anther is bilobe it consists of two lobes with each lobe having two theca each lobe is having two theca okay theca means what covering layers two layers two coverings for that it is called as they are dithecus okay a typical angiosperm anther is bilobed with each lobe having two thecas that is they are dithecus because they have two thecas di means two two thecas okay two coverings and even there is a longitudinal groove runs lengthwise separating the theca longitudinal groove okay there is a presence of longitudinal groove between these two which separates both the theca then you can find here the anther is four sided tetragonal okay when we take a section of this when you take a section of this anther ls when you take a section something like this it appears in this shape okay it is having it is bilobed two lobes are present already as we said and the anther is four sided tetragonal four sides 1 2 3 4 <laughs> each lobe have two lo two sides okay each lobe is having two sides so it is having two lobes so we it is having four sides okay the anther is having four sided tetragonal structure consisting of four microsporangia now what are this microsporangia okay these microsporangia they are located in the corners in each lobe if you see here in your next page of your textbook okay these are microsporangia okay so you can find there are four four microsporangia are present right it is tetragonal okay so then shall come back we were here the microsporangia develop further and become pollen sacs those microsporangia which are present here those will develop and become pollen sacs okay those will develop and grow it as pollen sacs they extend longitudinally all through the length of an anther and are packed with the pollen grain these pollen sacs are extending till the down okay they are like a tube like structure inside that what it is present they are packed fully with the pollen grains how pollen grains are formed we shall discuss that later okay now till now what we have discussed stamen consists of anther and a filament anther is bilobed dithecus and uh, it is having four sided tetragonal structure and each of one we call it as microsporangia this microsporangia later it will develop into pollen sac which means pollen bag you can imagine pollen sacs and these pollen sacs will produce pollen grains okay so it will be carrying pollen grains inside then now you will find structure of microsporangium structure of microsporangium is nothing but that complete structure it is this this is the structure of microsporangium when you go through the transverse section of microsporangium in its structure it appears circular in outline and that structure consists of four wall layers microsporangium consists of four wall layers first one is epidermis second is endothelium third is middle layer fourth one is tapetum these are the four wall layers present in microsporangium three wall layers their function is protection and help in digestion of the anther to release the pollen the innermost wall layer is tapetum it nourishes the developing pollen grains okay so you will find in this diagram okay this is a microsporangia or microsporangium because you will get this question draw a neat label diagram of microsporangium or explain the structure of microsporangium so in this you will find there are presence of four layers four layers of the first two outer line it is epidermis then next this region light in color that is endothelium okay it is multi layer double layer then you can find this region this region is middle layer then this is microsporangium we said that microsporangium is covered by a fourth layer called as tapetum okay if i draw it here okay just rough diagram i shall show you how it appears okay if you are drawing something like this the first one then comes 
one more layer around it three layers we shall draw around it okay then center one we are showing like this these are what microsporangium okay now this is a young anther diagram young anther diagram here in this we are showing with the lines first line epidermis okay then this shaded region shaded part I am shading it so that you can clearly identify it so that we call it as endothesium okay next this space what you can find there is a space right this space empty space here it is middle layer okay middle layer then what you have then fourth layer this covering outer covering two lines what we have drawn I should give you here it as table term <coughs> okay so that is table term now what we said this first one is epidermis second layer is endothesium third is middle layer fourth one is table term so first three layers their function is protection okay their function is protection fourth layer is providing nourishment it provides nourishment for whom for developing pollen grains where pollen grains will be present here inside this microsporangium okay so these are the regions where pollen grains are present did you got fine so where we were now in this what we have said there are there are lines these lines which we have drawn actually these are not lines it should be drawn something like this which they have shown clearly here the enlarged part of this okay either you can draw only this and show this enlarged part if you wanted to fill it completely then you have to draw this complete diagram and then you have to fill that one completely with the this kind of cells okay now what does it shows first line which we have drawn it is this layer this number of cells it is epidermis then two layered it is endoth endothesium then comes middle layer then comes tapetum function of tapetum is nourishment for whom it will nourish for growing pollen grains pollen grains are grown from what from microspore mother cells neocytes what we said okay neocytes gamete mother cell those gamete mother cells will be present inside this okay now you have to draw this diagram when they are going to ask draw neat label diagram of ts of young anther then this diagram both the diagrams you have to draw when they are asking to draw a TS of mature anther, then this diagram. Okay, mature anther is this, young anther is this. Okay, both of these. Okay, we were here. We shall come back. We were discussing about structure of microsporangium. It comes from four layers. First one is epidermis, then endothesium, then middle layer and tapetum. The first three layers function is protection and it helps in dehiscence of anther to release the pollen grain. Now, what do you mean by dehiscence? Dehiscence here means to cut or to, uh, as when there is a ripened mango, that mango will get, th this is a mango, that mango later, if it is on the tree itself, on a plant, then what happens? That mango will get a cut over it, That's its skin will get cut, epicarp, okay, it will get a small cut over it. Why it will get cut? So that it can release the seed outside, okay, that we call it as dehiscence. Here, similarly, the pollen grain, the anther which you have here, that anther will get a dehiscence over it, so that pollen grains which are present inside it, it will get released out. Because of which, in a mature anther, they have shown like this. This is the opened part. But here, in a young anther, there is no such thing which has been kept open. Here, there it has been opened. Why? Because here, this region will get a cut over it. The skin will get cut over it. So that what pollen grains are present, those should be released out. That we call it as dehiscence. Okay. So function of three wall layers, it is protection and help in dehiscence of anther. Anther will get dehisced or get a cut over it and release the pollen. Okay. The innermost wall layer is tapetum, as we said already. It nourishes the developing pollen grains. Its function is this. 
the cells of tapetum possess dense cytoplasm okay cells of tapetum they consist of more large amount of dense cytoplasm and have more than one nucleus okay you can say it as polyploid nucleus or multi multi nucleated nucleus multi nucleated cell this kind of questions you can mention okay fine these are the four layers then when the anther is young a group of compactly arranged homogeneous cell called as sporogenous tissue sporogenous tissue occupies the center of the microsporangium now what does it mean in this here we have shown that there is a tapetum inside that there will be presence of cells okay these is the cells when anther is young when it has not started to produce pollen grains okay when anther is young when it has not got mature then the tissue which is present inside that we call it as sporogenous tissue okay sporogenous tissue will be present inside this when anther is young when anther is getting mature which means that when these uh, uh, cells have started to get converted into pollen grains then this porogenous tissue will form microspore mother cell microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell for this we can give it as mmc or pmc microspore mother cell pollen mother cell okay where they are present these porogenous tissue when anther is getting matured these tissues will differentiate into microspore mother cell these microspore mother cell we have said it as uh, myocytes which we call it as gamete mother cell okay why we call this one as gamete mother cell because pollen is produced from these cells when pollen is produced from these cells means the cells which are producing pollen we call it as mother cell okay so microspore is an another term for pollen microspore is an another term of pollen for that we use microspore okay after this here you have next we have microsporogenesis very important to this microsporogenesis in microsporogenesis you will you can see okay in microsporogenesis you can find the cells of the sporogenous tissue undergo meiotic division the cells of sporogenous tissue they undergo meiotic division to form microspore tetrads okay about microsporogenesis i shall discuss in my next class because it's taking lot of time you might get bored okay so we shall meet in our next class if you have any queries any uh, ideas which i can implement in my videos please comment it in the comment box stay safe stay healthy